one of the biggest changes that you speak about is this movement from South to North, uh, whether that's in the United States, which you just mentioned, or the movement of peoples from the Caribbean North, right? From um, the global South to the North. Um, I was particularly fascinated by our, your observations in Russia and some of the changes in, um, going on there that we might not be seeing um, and not, might not be talked about, but that are already happening. Um, can you speak to uh, us a little bit more about the South to North migration and the change that you see uh, in the world um, in the next decades? And this is something that's been widely underreported. And I actually, it's an issue that I've been tracking for now, dare I say, 20 years since the first time I started traveling into Central Asia and parts of the Russian Far East and the Sino Russian border. And when I first started speaking about this issue, uh, and it was originally raised more by environmental watchdog, watchdog groups and so forth around, you know, over exploitation of Russian forestry by Chinese companies and, you know, sort of influx of seasonal and maybe even permanent settlers, merchants and otherwise from China and the Russian Far East. And there was talk of a yellow, yellow peril and Moscow and so forth. And when I document or just put together all of the various reportage, I was definitely persona non grata in Moscow for a good while. But over time, what you found, it's not that it's come 180 degrees, right? Russia's immigration policy is not Canada's policy. But as you saw in National Geographic just a couple of weeks ago, I provided a fair number of quotations from uh, you know, administrators, officials, bureaucrats who have actually spoken to in places like Krasnoyarsk and Novosibirsk and Vladivostok as I've traveled to these places. And I you know, flesh it out more in the book uh, and, and according to the sub-regions of the Russian Far East. But when you talk to the actual people who actually run and govern and administer the Russian state on a day in and day out basis, you realize that their appreciation of their own dilemma is far more refined and sophisticated and nuanced than what you hear in the Kremlin. If you were to judge you know, Russia's actual demographics and demographic policy and strategy and future and create a scenario around it based purely on Kremlin statements, you, know, you would assume that there was no migration into Russia. And of course, that's not true. Whereas if you look at the people who face this challenge, again, the, the bureaucrats and technocrats way out in the Far East, of managing Chinese infrastructure investment, wanting to diversify their economy, wanting to reindustrialize certain areas, wanting to harness their agricultural potential, guess what the answer always comes down to? We need more people. And what's the one thing that Ru the Russian Far East has an ever diminishing supply? It's indigenous people. So, you know, that's the reality. And of course, climate change puts us into uncharted territory, let's face it. And there's many situations, the Russian Far East, not exclusively, and the book is full of them, geographies in the world where I say, tell me how you believe that, you know, the demographic map stands still while climate change accelerates and you have all the you know, verdant habitable geographies here and all of the people here. And the Russian Far East, you know, Russian, it was Central Asia and I have a whole chapter on Kazakhstan too. We talk about the Caucasus, uh, Eastern Turkey. Um, these are all places that are phenomenally livable, relative, mm -hmm. increasingly livable, um, you know, relative to the, to the regions like South Asia. So what I, what I, the conclusion I come to is I look at the kind of new vectors of mass migration, uh, directionality and populations and ethnicities that we have literally never seen before migrating in the directions that they will migrate in, in the years ahead. And, and we will live to see that. And so I don't recall any prior other documented source other than my own kind of firsthand observation of ever larger populations of Indians and South Asians in Kazakhstan and in Russia, um, as well as, uh, you know, so again, this South Asia to Central Asia uh, migration. And then the forecast that I'm making about uh, Persians and Arabs moving into Eastern Turkey and the Caucasus and potentially into Russia as well. And all you have to do is to look at a map that overlays the geography of resources and habitability with the demographics. And you would only naturally come to that conclusion, irrespective of the political geography.